both here and those that are listening that pick up our sermons and our services online. We appreciate it so much. In preparing for today and a lot of things that I've seen throughout the last few weeks, one of the things that it's funny we even started to touch a little bit on at Sunday school, and I thought, uh oh, here we go, into my sermon. But one of the things that is really weighs heavy on my heart and life is putting our faith into action. That's the title of today's sermon. Putting our faith in action. If you have your Bibles, if you will, turn to James chapter 2, and we're going to read verses 14 through 18. James chapter 2, verses 14 through 18. But before we begin, I found this little illustration. There was a gentleman, and he was an associate of James Wesley. And he was highly respected by his friends, and he was used by God as a very effective preacher. And on one occasion, he was found in desperate financial need. And so when John Wesley found out about it and learned about his circumstances, he sent him a, a letter, and this is what the letter said. It said, Dear Sammy, trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Yours affectionately, John Wesley. But then attached to the back of that letter was a five-pound note, which to us today is equivalent to $10. And so this gentleman's reply to John Wesley was, Reverend and dear sir, I have often been struck with the beauty of the passage of scripture quoted in your letter, but I must confess that I never saw such a useful expository note, and he was referring to the money, on it. You know, someone has said, you can't take the place of being helpful. And to profess faith in Jesus Christ, folks, as Lord and Savior, and ignore the needs of people around us and fellow believers and even those who are not is inconsistent. Jesus said that truth faith translates into compassion and action. And the best way we can do that is what we're going to read today. You know, what is faith? What is faith? It's something that you live out in your daily lives. And according to James, there's three points we're going to look at this morning. Number one, faith requires action. Number two, faith requires compassion. And number three, faith requires evidence. Let's read our scripture. James chapter 2, verses 14 through 18. And the scripture reads, What did it profit, my brother, though a man say he have faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of food daily, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needful to the body, what does it profit? Even so, faith, it, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by thy works. Let's talk about that today. Number one, faith requires action. That's the first part of these scriptures. Let's break it down and see what it tells us. Can faith save you? Well, there was an early church father that said, take note of what spiritual understanding really is. It's not enough to just believe in intellectual sense, but there has to be some application to the belief. What's John's point? That's the point that James is making here. What good is faith that doesn't do anything? What good is it? In verse 14, James tells us, what good is it, dear brothers and sisters, what good is it if you say you have faith, but you don't show it in your actions? Can that kind of faith save anything? Well, no. There's two questions that we're asking this. Number one, about the faith without deeds. Number one, what good is it? What's the answer? The answer is none. There's nothing good about faith if there's not any deeds. And can it save? No. 
And what does that first question imply? The first question implies a lack of uselessness of faithful without actions. The second question implies that we're lacking what salvation itself is. See, the impact that we have to understand is that a person who claims to have faith obviously has to know that it has to have works. Faith alone, faith is good, but without deeds, you're not obeying Jesus Christ according to the scripture. Faith not accomplished by doings has no value. I can have faith all the way out all day long that the leaves in my yard will get raked. But unless I get out there with the rake or with the lawnmower and I rake the yard, the leaves are going to lay there. I can have faith that they can be gone, but they won't be gone unless I put action behind my faith. In the church world today, in our individual lives, we have to put the action behind the faith. Just faith can't save anyone. I can have faith all day long that God can save a person. But what leads that person to Jesus Christ? It's the action of showing them Jesus Christ. There has to be action behind faith. Because faith is in action. If we truly have faith in Jesus Christ and want what he wants us to do in this world, we're going to put the action behind it. You just can't talk about faith, folks. we got to act it out. We've got to express it in an outly way. I get fussed at all the time for helping these people who are walking along the street or who are sitting out under an umbrella and what have you. Um, last week, I had just come, I was fixing to come home from work, and I had not eaten all day long. So I thought, I'm just going to run through McDonald's, get me a couple of cheeseburger, larger fries, and Dr. Pepper, and apple pie. That sounds good. I'll eat it on the way home. That'll be good. I no sooner than came out of McDonald's, started down Whitehurst Road, got stopped at the red light, and there stands a little old man in the middle of the street, and he has this little sign, and you can barely read it because it was on a piece of pasteboard, and it was bent, and it says, Hungry. And he looked like he hadn't had a bath in about six months. And he was straggly. And I looked over at that bag and I thought, well, I don't have any more really cash cash. So I just rolled down the window and I motioned for him to come over. And he came over to the guard and I said, look, I don't have a lot of cash on me, but I just picked this up at McDonald's. Maybe this will help you not be hungry. And he said, thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. And he walked back over to the corner. And while I'm sitting at the red line, he sits down and starts eating the hamburger. Folks, I don't care who it is out there, whether it's in this church, another church, out in the world lost, we have to show our faith. We don't just have faith in God. We've got to let people see our faith in God through our actions toward them. Good faith with action, we'll reach out to those in need. The kind of faith like the Pharisees had in the parable of the Good Samaritan. You remember what happened there? What happened? They saw the man and what did they do? What did the Pharisees do? They walked right on by. Walked around him. We need to have the faith that shows Christ in action. How many times have you felt the need, or how many times have people felt the need that they really need to help somebody, and they're like, ooh, man, I really don't want to get involved in that situation. There's a lot going on in those dynamics. I don't want to get involved in that. Well, maybe God wants you to get involved. Maybe God wants you to have faith and reach out to them and show them. We need to have that kind of faith. We need to help because God helped us. When Jesus Christ came on this earth, he didn't just tell us what we needed to do. He showed us by the way he lived, by the outreach he had to those around him. That's the kind of faith, folks, that will save people. Yeah. See, what will save people is people seeing my actions through my faith. 
Because, see, I have the faith to believe that if I show people through my life and I show them Jesus Christ by being and doing and helping for them, then they will see the true Jesus Christ. The second thing is faith requires compassion. Amen. Faith requires compassion. Verse 15 and 16. Jesus not only continued his teaching on the faith, and by the works, but he gave the illustrations. What did he say in verse 15 and 16? He said, like, suppose you see a brother or sister who has no food or clothing. And basically, now I'm paraphrasing. I can read it, but I'm paraphrasing. And you say, goodbye, and have a good day, stay warm, eat well. And then you don't give that piece of the patient any food or clothing. What good did it do? What good is your faith? You're the Pharisees. Let me read it again so you can read it from the King James. It says... If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of their daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be you warm and filled. Well, if they were desolate and in need, how are they going to be warm and filled except you show compassion? We have to show compassion. You know, this particular verse here in 15 and 16 is sort of an illustration of how hip hypothetical some people can be. James' statement of a brother or sister, do you catch that in those verses? And I didn't catch that until I was really studying that. I was thinking of people in general. But it's when it's talking about our brothers and sisters, it's talking about those in our midst, our brothers and sisters in Christ, real people. You know, many of God's people during this time, we already know when you study the history, was living in some economic hardships. Now, it doesn't imply that all the Christians were living in poverty, but that they were encountered a hardship. And there was lack of sufficiency in clothing and everyday needs and supply. And the response to the need is good wishes without any actions. Is that the way we do today? When we see that there are people out there in need, do we say, I'll pray for you? Well, that's all well and good, folks. But if they need help, we need to put our faith in action by helping them. We need to let them see the actions of our faith. Right. I had a person ask me one time, why do you do this for us? And I said, because it's what God led me to do. God wanted you to know he loves you and he cares about you. So he directed me to come and help you do this. We need to make sure that we're doing more to help and not just looking at people, even though we may think we have faith and say, go in peace. Just go in peace. Have you looked at everybody? Have you ever looked at anybody and said, well, I, I hope they'll be okay. I'll pray for them. That is good. You do need to pray for them. But you also need to ask God what you can do to help them. Amen. You need to put your faith in action. Amen. The Bible says, do unto others as you would have them do unto me. And I would pray and hope that the people around me that say they love me and that they are a Christian. Because let me tell you something. It's one thing to say you have faith. But it's another thing to show your faith as a true Christian. And we need to have the type of faith that people can see Jesus Christ in our lives by our actions. And sometimes that doesn't mean throwing scripture at them. Sometimes that may mean going mother grass. Sometimes that may mean go and take them something to eat. Sometimes that may mean seeing that they have a need and meeting that need and never saying anything about it. I can remember couples that have sat right here in front of us. And when we were at Freedom and Jim and I first started the church, there were times when at Christmas they didn't even have for their children for Christmas. So what did we do? We went and bought Christmas and one night when we knew they weren't there, we took it and set it at the front door. There's nothing I love more than for God to lay somebody on my heart and me doing something and never saying anything about it. because, And I want God to get the glory for what's going down there. I have faith that he will help me by helping them for them to see. There was a story that I read about. I used to watch, and Jim and I used to listen to on the radio every Saturday morning about a mission up in Chicago. And it told live stories about people's lives and people being led to the Lord. But I, I found this one. I heard that 
And there was a friend who worked downtown and in and out of Chicago. And as he was working the streets trying to tell people about the Lord, a prostitute came to him and said she was in wretched straits, homeless, sick. She was unable to buy food for her two-year-old daughter. Now, this is a sad, true story, but I want you to listen to this. And it said through her sobs and tears that she told him that she had been renting out her daughter, two years old. <coughs> it said she could make more renting out her two-year-old daughter for an hour than she could earn a full night on her own. She said, I had to do it to support my only drug habit. Now, honey, people are in trouble with the devil. And she and, and he said, I could barely, I could barely stand here in this story. And he said he had no idea what to say to this woman. And at last he said, he, he said, have you ever thought about going to church for help? And he said, I will never forget the look of pure anger and shock that crossed her face. Now, this is what's sad. She said, church, she cried. Why would I ever go there? I already am feeling terrible. And they just make me feel worse when I had reached out to them. Folks, we have got to remember that we have got to let people, I don't care what walk of life they're from, we've got to let them see Jesus. Our faith in Jesus needs to show through our works. That woman needed help. And what happened? When she reached out to the church, she was looked on as nothing. She was turned away in such a way or made feel in such a way. She just left. That is the worst thing that a Christian can ever do to another human being. Now, I don't know why the Lord is leading me down this path for this service today for this. I don't know. But I will tell you this. We need to get on our knees and ask God to help us to put our faith in action. <coughs> because when we do, our faith will express our compassion for others. Because when we do that, that's when the church is going to rise and be like Jesus. It's not about numbers. Numbers are great. I wish we had the house so full that people couldn't get up and down the highway this morning. But let me tell you something. We can do what God's called us to do. And we have to do it by our faith through our actions. The last point I want to make with these verses in 17 and 18 is faith requires evidence. Show you my faith. 17 and 18. Let me read it again. Even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead. Being alone. You can have all the faith on God you want to. Now listen to me carefully. You can have all the faith about Jesus, about his word, and about what and how a Christian should be all you want to. But to truly put action with that is being in his faith and living his faith. It's essential in what James is saying in these last few verses that we look at. He said it, let me say it again. He said, so you see, faith by itself ain't enough, folks. Unless it produces good deeds, it's useless. It's useless. <coughs> Just like I said, my leaves. I can have faith that those leaves can be out of my yard, but my faith in that is useless unless I get out and do something about it. James's expectation here tells us it's so strong that he, conclude, he concludes with the most severe condemnation of faith without deeds. He says it's dead. It's useless. The words in the sentence refer back to the word faith. <coughs> These words emphasize the focus of John's of James, excuse me, James's concern, which is faith by itself. What does that mean? Faith without the authenticated actions. It's not that he's produced he's Promoting deeds as an alternate to faith. He knows the value of faith, James does. 
But he calls those to have faith, to have put the action behind their faith. Good deeds are the fruit of living faith. Did you know that? I have faith that Jesus is going to lead me anywhere he wants me to go. I have faith that Jesus is going to show me, the Lord's going to show me what he wants me to do each day of my life. And I truly believe that. But do you know how that faith is going to become reality? If I listen to his voice, that's the point I'm trying to make this morning, folks. If I listen to his voice and I follow out with the actions when he tells me to do something, <coughs> sometimes the Lord tells me to just get by myself in my office and with my Bible. And I have found it is the most peaceful thing to shut everything, every TV, every noise in that house off and just go in my office with my Bible and sit and read. It's amazing how God talks to you. And I can have, God wants me to have faith, but my faith in Jesus Christ has to have actions behind it. It has to have actions. If those around us, because when our faith has actions, people are going to see it. People are going to know it. Do you know how people know we're having church down here? They see our actions. They see us here on Sunday. They see us here sometimes during the week, mowing the grass, blowing the leaves, sweeping the steps. They see our actions. How does people know about the faith? They see the actions. We have to know. And James responded in these last two verses saying, I can't see your faith if you don't have good deeds. That's basically what he's saying here, folks. You can say you're a Christian all day long. You can say you have faith in Jesus Christ. But you got to put legs and you got to put action with that faith. You know what? True faith in Jesus Christ cannot be demonstrated apart from action. Faith is within us. But the actions is what is produced through us. Let me say it again. Faith is in us. But actions is what is produced through us. How many of you know who Dave Thomas was? He died in early 20, 2002. He was the man and the owner, CEO. He left behind more than a thousand Wendy's restaurants. But they said he also left a legacy of being a practical, hardworking man who was respected for his down-to-earth values. And in reading all about him in one of his books, he, he, there was a book, it's called Well Done. <clears throat> there was, in his view of, of everything, and among the good pieces of advice that had outlived him that he had given, his view of what Christians should be doing with their lives was very important to him. And he was influenced by Christ and for Christ by his grandmother. And somebody <clears throat> said one of his main sayings was, we should be a roll-up-your-sleeves Christian. And in his book, Well Done, he said, roll-up-your-shirt-sleeves Christians. See Christianity as faith and action. He said they still make the time to talk with God through prayer, Study scripture with devotion, be super active in their church, and take their ministry to others to spread the good word. And when he's, when he was talking about the kind of a Christian that has puts their faith into action, that's what he was. That's how he was describing them. And he went on to say, those people who are doing good for Christ may be doing good, may be doing more good than all the well-known so-called Christians in the world. And what does, that, what does that statement mean? Somebody said that statement meant more than the Wendy's triple burger with all that meat in it. He knew what hard work was, and he knew it was vital to be what he needed to be as a Christian. What are you saying to us, Donna? We need to be a roll-up-our-sleeve Christian. There's plenty to do. We need to get our faith and our actions together because faith without our actions is dead and useless. 
I can have all the faith in the world that God's going to give me what to say. But if I don't say it when he gives it to me to say, it's absolutely useless. Right. I can have all the head knowledge I need. There's lots of people out here in the church world that are scholars. They have all the head knowledge in the world. But when it comes to putting the actions behind what they know, they're like a stump on the log. And folks, that is faith without action. And it is dead. Matthew 7, 18 and 20. Let me read what it says. It says, a good, tree can't, a good tree can't produce bad fruit and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. So every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Think about that for a minute. Yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. You can say you have faith all day long. You can say you're a hard Christian all day long. But the actions behind that will truly bring the story out. And the Bible is very clear about a tree that won't bear fruit. I just read to you what it said in Matthew. Jesus tells us that if we don't produce good fruit, we'll be chopped down and thrown into the fire. Why? Why? Because a tree that doesn't produce any fruit is dead. It's useless. It's no good. It's just taking up the water system and all of that. The true faith in Jesus produces actions, folks, that are similar to the actions that Jesus displayed. When Jesus came here, he knew, he had the faith, but he produced the actions. Just like we talked into in Sunday school, when he healed the man, even though it was against the Pharisees and what they were teaching, he healed the man and sent him on the way. Truth, faith. If we have true faith, it will cause us to reach out to those in need. We will have action behind what we are doing. Most of all, if we have true faith with actions, it causes people to see Jesus Christ because they will see it through us. When people question, why are you being good to me and why are you helping me? And you tell them it's because I believe in Jesus Christ and this is what he told me to do. You're giving them Jesus Christ through your actions. My bottom line is this. I don't want to just tell people about my faith. I want to show people my faith. Amen. I don't want to just tell people about my faith. I want to show people my faith. What is faith in conclusion? It's something that you live out daily in your life. Faith requires action. Faith requires compassion. And faith requires evidence. These three things, remember that. Faith is more than what you have, but it's something that you do. Faith in motion tends to stay in motion. When people see your faith by what you do, they're going to be more willing to listen to you. They're going to be more listen, willing to listen when you talk about it. And they're going to see what you're doing through Jesus Christ. See, the Pharisees would talk a big talk. But Jesus walked the walk. Amen? Mm -hmm. You and I, folks, need to make sure that our faith is with action. Our faith has the action. We need to put our faith in action. And if we're not, if we don't have our faith in action by living out our faith daily by doing what God's called us to do, we need to ask him to give us a bigger burden and more faith to be able to carry out and to give us what we need. Amen? Amen. Put our faith into action, as James told them here. Otherwise, we're spinning our wheels and it's dead. Amen? Amen.